You see, TV is power. The power to love, to pacify. And then when all eyes are glazed and all minds are jelly, power to hold the world in your fist. Are you ready, Amelia? Yes, I am. All right, roll sound. Welcome to Different Views, One Voice. Each week, our host, Amelia Ismore, will have conversations with her guests, telling us their views on music, spirituality, politics, lifestyles, fashion, hip-hop and culture, each having different views, one voice. Welcome to Different Views, One Voice. I'm your host, Amelia Is More. Now today, we have a special guest and a special topic. You know, there's a question about the nature of women and how can we change the nurturer so that the nature of society changes along with her. Well, our next guest has a I guessed a modest opinion to go along with it and a new direction for designing, and that is all about modesty in clothing. Now, just like our outfits, it's not so black and white. And today we get a chance to interview and speak with Natasha Lampkin from Tashi Inc. Welcome to Different Views, One Voice. How are you this evening? I'm fabulous. How are you? <laughs> I'm fabulous now that I'm wearing Tashi. Yes. So now let's talk about modesty in clothing. You're rooted in a Christian background. Sure. Is that what started to point you in this direction as far as modesty clothing is concerned? Well, uh, what rooted me to take the step to pursue modesty, modest apparel was my experience in the acting and modeling industry. So I didn't always dress like this. Even though I had um, more morals and stuff like that, but I was still in and out of the world. So, you know, certain occasions I would just dress with a body contour dress, cleavage showing. But um, I think I, it was about two years ago when I had an epiphany that how I was dressing to go outside, it wasn't good. Mm. And you can say it was a voice from God. Okay. So it was my Holy Spirit telling me that, Natasha, how are you going to claim that you're a Christian, but when you step out in public and you go to certain events, parties, you're dressing a whole different way. Mm -hmm. So I had that conviction. So that's when I started to change how I dressed. And at the same time, I was uh, in the modeling and acting industry. I was designing and uh, for different clientels. And I got convicted about what I was designing for them. So I had to tell my clients I couldn't do this or do that because my whole aesthetic changed. And uh, a little bit after that, that's when I decided to make a whole clothing line all about modesty. Now, let's play devil's advocate, because I love doing that every once in a while. Everybody that watches the show knows that I like to try to test or look at things from different perspectives. So what do you say to the person or the girl or the young lady that says, well, I'm proud of my body, and I want to show my body every way that I can? And, you know, if you don't like it too bad, it's, it's not about being over the top. It's about me loving me. Okay. Okay, so I will ask them, what is their relationship with God? Mm. You know, because if you don't have, a, I, me personally, if you don't have that strong relationship with God, then how are you going to say you know who you are? You know, like, I'm going to do what I want to do. That's, how can you say that if you're a Christian? So you have to take that in consideration, being a Christian, to uh, make sure that your body and soul represents God. Mm, exactly. So. And there's still a, a level of contemporary in it. It's not like you're dressing like the old days exactly. of Christian women where the turtlenecks was yes. up here. You have some styles that you can go on the red carpet with yes. that is just as classy and just as competitive. Now, how did you come to the decision as far as, okay, I want to make this a lot more contemporary, but then how do you put in that Christian flair with it? Well, I do that because um, my line represents me. So, you know, everywhere I go, I'm, you know, when I design, I have to think, what, what, should, what would I wear? So what would I wear to a party? 
not a party party, but you know, like maybe a um, birthday party or some type of event, what would I wear? So I would design what I will wear. Mm. So that's, that's how I incorporate the Christian values for each different facets. Now um, let's look at your client, the conversation that you would have with your client. So in relation to com communicating with your clients, how do you uh, speak with them or communicate with them as far as your whole modesty concept? You know, if maybe they, how do, how do you get them to embrace your ideas? Well, I just show them examples. So if I have a client who says, oh, I would like something to wear for my sister's wedding, but I want a slit that goes all the way up here, you know, and I want a neckline that goes all the way down here. So how I will convey modest appeal, I will say, well, you know, you really don't have to do that. You can actually, you, don't, you really don't have to do the slit. You can actually do something um, that may look like this. You know, I'll sketch something out for them, something that's appealing, but not overtly sexual. And um, I give them different options so they can see like another style. Let's talk about your YouTube channel because I know that you're starting to do this whole YouTube thing and I think it's really interesting. You've had some really nice discussions. Thank you. Your target consumer really is millennials and, and some that are older. How hard was it for you to introduce this concept of modesty with a younger demographic? It was harder because um, you know, I feel that nowadays uh, sex sells is really on a very high level right now. <laughs> you know, there's a lot of things going on. But um, I chose to do things that were trending. Mm. You know, because I know what's hip. I know what's, you know, going on. But I chose to incorporate what's trending into modesty. And uh, my friends, they gravitated towards it very well. Yeah, I noticed that. It was a, it, in some of the videos that you had, and tell them where they could see that. The mm -hmm. conversation was so candid that I was surprised. I was taken back and I was like, that was one of the reasons why it prompted me to get you on different views because uh -huh. it really is a different view. It's very contemporary. Well, my YouTube channel is Natasha Lampkin and uh, yeah, I just started it because I needed to know, it was basically I needed to know who were my clientele, who were buying my stuff. So I wanted to know their opinion and the men. Because, you know, sometimes I believe like certain women, they dress to, you know, for the guy's attention and, you know, and it was great to hear their views. Yeah, about, that was surprising. Yes, it really was. And they were just... It was very surprising. <laughs> the guys were very <laughs> controversial. <laughs> but um, <laughs> it was a lot going on. So where do you <laughs> hope that this whole modesty and clothing uh, movement, because I'd like to call it that because it's starting yeah. to expand and more and more people are starting to embrace it and understand it. Where do you hope it, where do you hope the end result of this is? Is there an end result? And how do more people become more involved in it? Well, the basis of this was more of a spiritual thing. So, um, you know, I'm, I'm doing this to help people because mm. I minister through my clothing line. So I do this to, to see like what's inside because you can change your outside apparel, but what about the inside? So, you know, with my clothing line, I, um, I not only just have a YouTube channel, but I send out newsletters weekly, weekly newsletters, so I can, um, with scriptures and um, word of the day for my consumers to let them know that, you know, it starts from the inside. So my mission is to really help individuals from the inside and out. And, you know, what I really liked about some of the conversation was I was seeing the transformation with some of the young ladies. Yes. Some of them started with the conversation of, yeah, well, you know, I think it's cool and everything else. And then towards the end of the conversation, they were like, oh, I get it. 
Mm -hmm. I really understand it. And I think some of that had to do with the male perspective. Exactly. Like it was very refreshing to see some of the males say, well, you know, if I see everything, what more is there for me to see? Mm -hmm. Like I want to discover it and know that it's just for my eyes only. And that was really interesting to see yeah. a young 20 something year old brother mm -hmm. say that. Exactly. You know, so for the young lady that's out there, that's sitting on the picket fence, trying to decide which direction she should go. What do you tell her? I'll tell her to seek God first. Mm. You know, because if you don't have a, I, me personally, if you don't have that strong relationship with God, then how are you gonna say you know who you are? You know, like, I'm gonna do what I wanna do. That's, how can you say that if you're a Christian? So you have to take that in consideration, being a Christian, to uh, make sure that your body and soul represents God. Mm, exactly. So. And there's still a, a level of contemporary in it. It's not like you're dressing like the old days exactly. of Christian women where the turtlenecks was yes. up here. You have some styles that you can go on the red carpet with yes. that is just as classy and just as competitive. Now, how did you come to the decision as far as, okay, I want to make this a lot more contemporary, but then how do you put in that Christian flair with it? Well, I do that because... Um, my line represents me. So, you know, everywhere I go, I'm, you know, when I design, I have to think, what, what, should, what would I wear? So what would I wear to a party? Not a party party, but you know, like maybe a um, birthday party or some type of event, what would I wear? So I would design what I will wear. Mm. So that's, that's how I incorporate the Christian values for each different facets. So, in relation to com communicating with your clients, how do you uh, speak with them or communicate with them as far as your whole modesty concept? You know, if maybe they, how do, how do you get them to embrace your ideas? Well, I just show them examples. So if I have a client who says, oh, I would like something to wear for my sister's wedding but I want a slit that goes all the way up here, you know, and I want a neckline that goes all the way down here. So how I will convey modest appeal, I will say, well, you know, you really don't have to do that. You can actually, you, don't, you really don't have to do the slit. You can actually do something um, that may look like this. You know, I'll sketch something out for them, something that's appealing, but not overtly sexual. And, um, I give them different options so they can see like another style. Let's talk about your YouTube channel because I know that mm -hmm. you're starting to do this whole YouTube thing and I think it's really interesting. You've had some really nice discussions. Thank you. Your target consumer really is millennials and, and some that are older. How hard was it for you to introduce this concept of modesty with a younger demographic? It was harder because, um, you know, I feel that nowadays uh, sex sells is really on a very high level right now. <laughs> you know, there's a lot of things going on. But um, I chose to do things that were trending, mm. you know, because I know what's hip. I know what's, you know, going on. but. I chose to incorporate what's trending into modesty. And uh, my friends, they gravitated towards it very well. Yeah, I noticed that. It was a, it, in some of the videos that you had, and tell them where they could see that. The conversation was so candid that I was surprised. I was taken back and I was like, that was one of the reasons why it prompted me to get you on different views because uh -huh. it really is a different view. It's very contemporary. Well. My YouTube channel is Natasha Lampkin, and uh, yeah, I just started it because I needed to know, it was basically I needed to know who were my clientele, who were buying my stuff. So I wanted to know their opinion, and the men. Because, you know, sometimes I believe like certain women, they dress to, you know, for the guy's attention, and you know, and it was great to hear their views yeah. about 
That was surprising. Yes, it really was. And they were just, it was very surprising. <laughs> the <Yeah>. guys <laughs> were very controversial. <laughs> but um, <laughs> it was a lot going on. So where do you <laughs> hope that this whole modesty and clothing uh, movement, because I'd like to call it that because it's starting it to expand and more and more people are starting to embrace it and understand it. Where do you hope it, where do you hope the end result of this is? Is there an end result? And how do more people become more involved in it? Well, the basis of this was more of a spiritual thing. So, um, you know, I'm, I'm doing this to help people. Mm because I minister through my clothing line. So I do this to, to see like what's inside because you can change your outside apparel, but what about the inside? So, you know, with my clothing line, I, um, I not only just have a YouTube channel, but I send out newsletters weekly, weekly newsletters. So I can, um, with scriptures and um, word of the day for my consumers to let them know that you know, it starts from the inside. So my mission is to really help individuals from the inside and out. And you know, what I really liked about some of the conversation was I was seeing the transformation with some of the young ladies. Yes. Some of them started with the conversation of, yeah, well, you know, I think it's cool and everything else. And then towards the end of the conversation, they were like, oh, I get it. Mm -hmm. I really understand it. And I think some of that had to do with the male perspective. Exactly. Like it was very refreshing to see some of the males say, well, you know, if I see everything, what more is there for me to see? Mm -hmm. Like I want to discover it and know that it's just for my eyes only. And that was really interesting to see yeah. a young 20 something year old brother mm -hmm. say that. Exactly. You know, so for the young lady that's out there, that's sitting on the picket fence, trying to decide which direction she should go, what do you tell her? I'll tell her to seek God first. And I'll tell her to allow yourself to hear him, have a keen ear to his voice. And then after, you'll be guided straight through. And you'll find out what you need to do and what direction you should take. Because it helped me. So I'm just giving advice of what helped me. And style is a definition of yourself. Exactly. So never forget that you can redefine yourself and restyle yourself. And if you want to try something new, definitely go to TashiInc.com. I am your host, Amelia is more, and we're going to see some of the fashions, and we're also going to have a panel discussion with some of your peers, correct? Correct. So you don't want to go anywhere. You want to keep it right here for part two. The Fashion Show. I'm your host, Amelia is more for different views, one voice. We'll be right back. Okay, well, it's all about us starting with phase number two, taking the words and actually putting them into action. Now, talk to us about what we're about to see, because we talked about modesty and clothing, but uh, is there color? Is there flair? What is it? There's everything. There's color, flair, innovative pieces, you're going to see a lot of classic designs, but very graceful. Well, with no further ado, let's start with our models. So here we have the dual purple skirt cape with the fashionable crop top. Mm -hmm. The dual purple skirt cape, you can wear that as a cape or a skirt, or you can pair it with a fa the fashionable crop top, which comes with a camisole underneath. Nice. And the material is made out of ne neoprene. Yeah, you know, I love the neoprene because not only is it warm, but it's durable. Yes. So, you know, it's like that. Everybody always wonders whether or not you can wash, you know, ready wear. And yes, you can. Yeah, you can. I prefer to dry clean it. Yes. Because, you know, washing it, it might change lose the, the color. Yes. The shape a little bit. It, it will lose the shape. Mm -hmm. So I will prefer to dry clean it. Now, I noticed the neckline. You know, it's very retro, like almost like in the 50s. Yeah. Was that intentional? Yes, it's a boat neck neckline. And I was inspired by the 50s because I feel that during that era, it definitely ex accentuated a lot of modest appeal. Mm. So I was definitely inspired by the 50s and the 60s. Thank you, lady. Yeah, I like that concept of being able to go from the top to the bottom. Yeah. 
That's pretty cool. And that's what my uh, clothing line is about. It's um, showing the audience and my clientele that you can wear modesty in different ways. And versatile. Yeah, versatile, very versatile. Well, speaking of versatile, that's what we're about to see in the yes. next model, correct? Yes. So Larissa is wearing a dual purpose skirt cape and she's wearing it as a cape. She's gonna show you how you can transition it into a skirt. I love it. And you know what I love about this is that you can actually go from day wear, you know, like if you had to do something, you know, contemporary and mm -hmm. then all of a sudden you wanted to do something stylish, yes. you don't have to buy another piece no. in your wardrobe. You can just utilize it another way. Exactly. And when you wear it as a cape, you can just put on some shades and rock some nice heels with it and be on the go. Probably go to a fashion show with that. So, because you know, New York ladies, we do a lot in one day. Yes. You know, we can. I like like the way she came out was very casual, very contemporary. Now she's very chic. Mm -hmm. She's very office ready. Yes. I like. Thank you. Thank you. So next we have the jumpsuit. Now this is fun. Yes. So with the black jumpsuit, Loisine, she's wearing the bold statement cross necklace. And Robin, she's wearing the jumpsuit in purple. It comes in four different colors. Mm -hmm. Comes in purple, black, white, and gray. And you can dress up this look. You can dress this look up or down. Well, you know what I like about this is that it has a little trail, so it's very classic. You know, yes. most rompers, it stops at the ankle, and that's pretty much about it. Yeah. But you've got this little trail happening. Did, why did you decide to do that? Well, I wanted to show people that you can be trendy, stylish and elegant. So the train, it gives that elegant elegant appeal. So you can wear that to a red carpet event or a gala. And um, so that's why I chose a bold statement cross necklace for the black mm. jumpsuit. And for Robin, you can pair that with a nice jeans jacket. You know, I take a that. walk to the park. I see yeah. that little crop, little crop jeans yes, jacket. Yes, and yes, and yes. Cute. Thank you, lady. So next we have the romper, ah. yeah, so you can dress this look up or down as well. And Jennifer, she has on white sneakers. And Liz, she has on the subtle cross statement necklace. Okay. Yeah, so one's going to a party and the other one's going to a picnic. Yeah, going to a picnic With or... With the same style. Now, I noticed that although you state you show the contour, you kind of flare out after mm -hmm. the waist. Is that intentional as well? Yes, all my pieces are intentional because I want to show the customers that, you know, you don't have to wear a body con contour dress to be appealing or to be sexy or what, what You don't need you. to show the butt cheek. Yes, you don't, <laughs> you don't. <laughs> Thank you, ladies. Now, so. I noticed most of this is like, you know, every day, kind of ready to wear, but do you have like, you know, elegant, more high-end? Yes, I do, and that's the final look that oh, you see. Oh, okay. Okay, red carpet. Nice. Here you go. So, we have the asymmetrical leopard dress, and we have the golden feather dress. You can wear that to a red carpet event. Yeah, or any like formal right, event, right. every any formal event, you can you can wear these two looks. Yeah, that's a show stunner, without a doubt. That's a showstopper. Thank you. <laughs> people are definitely going to pay attention to you wearing that feather dress. Now, why did you choose feathers? Well, for the golden feather dress, I chose feathers because I believe that I'm an eagle, soar high. So uh, I was inspired by uh, the eagle, mm. and uh, the eagle is very bold. So I wanted to make a bold, bold statement dress that, you know, it's, it's not overtly sexual. You can wear this and feel confident without showing any skin. Mm -hmm. So uh, that was my inspiration was the eagle. Yeah, it's very classic, but at the same time, a statement piece that it just stands out on its own. Yes. And that's what I liked about your asymmetrical dress as well. It's kind of retro, but at the same time, it's contemporary because of the leopard and stuff like that, you know? Yes. So you can just, you know, put the pearls or whatever you want to do and jazz it up. You can just be simply stated the way she's wearing it, right? Exactly. And that's that was my inspiration. Uh, for the leopard asymmetrical dress, I wanted to show customers that you can wear modest apparel in different ways. You can go out 
to a red carpet event or any formal event by being modest at the same time. Nice. Thank you, lady. Now, what can we expect going forward? Like, are you going to start doing it per season like they do on 7th Avenue where you have your resort line, your spring line, your fall line, your winter line? Because I notice right now you're doing mostly individuals and uh, specialty lines, like specific for your customers. Yes, so going forward, you will expect to see seasonal. You will expect to see a seasonal line from me and you'll expect to, my big launch, because that's mm. coming up soon. Mm -hmm. So, but right now, um, just starting, I'm just doing it by uh, just bits and pieces for now. Well, you know, as we spoke about it earlier in the, in the show, we said that, you know, modesty in clothing has now become an issue, not only with the OGs like me that really feel like you don't have to show it all, but now our millennials as well. So we winded up catching and inviting a few people into the audience, into the studio, so that we could hear from them firsthand how they feel about modesty and clothing. It is Different Views, One Voice with your host, Amelia is Moore. We'll be right back. Well, we're back. And now, as I mentioned earlier, with Miss Natasha Lamkin, for Lamkin, excuse Lampkin. me, with uh, Tashi Inc. and her modesty clothing line. Now, you know, you said about that you're a Christian designer. And I want to pose this to my panel that's saying thank you so much for coming to Different Views, One Voice. How important is it to you as far as the presentation of someone? What do you get from when you see them? You know, like you see Natasha dressed the way she is. Does that make you see some, uh, interpret her as one person versus when you see a Nicki Minaj, does that make you interpret her in a, you know, slightly planted clothing? Anybody? Well, yeah, definitely um, your appearance will show you, it might not show everything of who you are, but it will definitely give off a message of what you're trying to present, what you're trying to convey. And so, you know, dressing modestly definitely applies physically. Definitely, it's a part of it. Now, that's interesting from a male's per perspective because, you know, so much out in today's world, they're always talking about, you know, the girls and how they want her to be this way and that way. And when you listen to some of the horrible lyrics that are out there, mm -hmm. you know, it, it has all these other messages. From a male's perspective, what do you look for that says, hmm? Well, I look for definitely... Um, um, physically, not trying to draw attention to yourself overly so, um, but also I look deeper than the physical too because even when it comes to modesty and, and standards of beauty, um, it goes beyond the physical. It, it goes, you know, to the spiritual because you know, you know, as Christians, we believe that um, in the Bible it says that God is the beauty of holiness, and so beauty is spiritual in nature, mm. first, firstly, and so then it manifests itself physically. So you know, for me, whenever I look at a woman. Um, you have people that you know are in church and, and give off a vibe that they are modest, but then their character isn't. So, you know, I think it all combines together of having to dress physically modestly, but also being able to convey a spirit of modesty. Okay. Natasha, I want to ask you because you know your client base. There, you have clients that actually call you and say, "I need a dress, or I needed this, or I needed that." When they're communicating what they want, do you take into account what they want to accentuate, or is that a, is that an actual conversation? Yes, it is, because I know what what I'm promoting. I'm promoting modesty, so the client, they will have to align with my uh, aesthetic. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, if my client tells me, oh, I want to go, I want something for my birthday, but um, I want it to be maybe four inches above my knee, and I'll be like, oh, um, I don't know if I can do that. Maybe we can do it like two inches down. You know, I try to compromise. So nice. I definitely take that into account. Now, ladies, I want to hear from the ladies. What do you think about this whole concept of modesty in clothing? Anybody? Raise your hand. <laughs> okay, so after you all hear it from her. Um, I think modesty in clothing is, is, is a concept that most people, I don't know if they really think about what they dress, like if it's modest or if it's sexy. I think some women just kind of look at what they see on TV mm. and they just emulate what they see. And if all they see are small pieces or skinny pieces, they haven't developed their own sense of style. 
So I think um, what Natasha has developed in her line is kind of giving people another view, another thing to look at, because most women or younger generation, they're looking at the images they see on TV. So to see another image presented and it looks graceful, it looks beautiful, it still looks, you know, a nice way of being sexy, I think it gives them a new perspective on what to do. And can I hear from you in the back? Yeah, I know that you wanted to say something as well. Yeah, like with Tasha's line, it definitely has style and grace. And a lot of things that she have is like trending right now, like the flair and her pop of color. So it's great that young girls who are coming up don't have to just see sex cells to walk down the street and have someone look at you and compliment you on your outfit. You can come in any old way. And it doesn't even have to just be like, I'm going to church and I want to dress like that. You go to school like that. You go to work like that. And um, like I said, with her colors and she's already on trend, I think it would be a great line for every. So now I'm very interested um, because, you know, uh, in the entertainment industry, you know, there's that saying, sex sells. And, you know, is it at a point now where we're saying that sexiness has to be redefined or there's a way to redefine sexiness? I think we have to pull it back because um, nowadays I see women coming on the red carpet with bathing suits mm. and just a cover up. So um, I feel that the sexiness that they are trying to push, push out, I feel like it's just too much. And young girls, they're seeing this and they're like, oh, okay, look, look you five or six years old and just think like, okay, I, I wanna wear like a bodysuit and go out and wear my cleavage, you know, have my cleavage out and everything like that. And I don't think that would be a problem. Their mindset is just altered because of it. Well, you know what's really interesting, too, for me, as someone that is on both sides of the fence, you know, being in the entertainment industry, but then also, you know, very spiritual and very grounded and working with the youth, I see that, like, the entertainment world is a whole world all on its own. You know what I mean? But when you take those same Im images and you put it on the street, it's not as glamorous. So what would you guys say if you saw that? How would you address it? Like if you had a young cousin or a young sister, what kind of advice or what would you tell her? Male perspective over there? I'm seeing maybe perchance. Because <laughs> well, his face just went. <laughs> <laughs> right, well, uh, and as you said that, I do have two younger sisters. And um, seeing them, like, they're growing into their, themselves because they're the young women right now. One is... Um, turning 15 mm -hmm. and the other one is already like 23 ah. so you know they always kind of like exercise their uh the what they want to say through through what they wear mm -hmm. and um as their brother i've seen a lot of different stuff um so i kind of like kind of try to guide them in a sense of what what is appropriate and what probably may be too too risque or you know what have you um so uh, if I see them doing something or wearing something, like say for example, that may be that may be um, questionable, I'll pull them to the side and say, you know, you probably shouldn't wear that that way. You probably should wear something else or wear something different. Great. I noticed that you wanted to say something as well. No. Oh. Um, about young girls dressing a certain way. Um, I know growing up, for me, like, I loved Hollywood glamour. Mm -hmm. So that was my thing, like, looking at Lena Horne, Dorothy Daniels, what they did. So now these young girls, I want to know who they have to look up to. Mm. You know, who is that glamour person? I think, like, Janelle Monae is, like, a perfect oh, yeah. example of what a young girl should look like. You know, how, especially with accepting our hair, too, the mm. go with the clothes and yes. all that kind of well, stuff. Well, wasn't so. that what Viola just did? Viola mm -hmm. Davis, yeah. yeah. Yes. So I mean, I just think, like, that is a great person to look up to right now for young girls. And for um, Tasha's line, is it, that's another amazing example of what you can look like without being, like, over the top and over sexy but still have this class and this elegance and this grace about you. So if everybody, pass the mic around if, for those that want to speak. If you had to put modesty in clothing in one word, what would that one word be that it translates to you? I would say that modesty um, is classic 
and classy that you know you can show confidence um, without showing too much well we have so oh wait do you have another one I guess I would say okay. modesty, the one word is uh, humility, because nice. you're not really trying to, like, it's, like I said, you're not trying to draw attention to yourself so much. You Anybody else? You know. Anybody else? Yes. I would agree um, with you know, the other young lady that's here and say that modesty does mean classy. And one thing that I do see with Tasha um, is classy. I think it emulates that more than anything else that I've seen out there. And I do think it's, a, it's the call you know, to, uh, or a new standard almost to uh, something that young women can aspire to, especially young girls can aspire to. Thank you. You know, and that really brings it to the subject matter of what this show is all about, different views, one voice. It is about choices. It is about your voice being heard. And Tasha, Natasha is really speaking very loudly and setting a new standard so eloquently stated by yourself that life and style is a choice. Choose to do you, be you, but understand that others are watching. I'm your host at the Most Familiar is More. This is Different Views, One Voice. Let your voice be heard. And tell them where they can see everything. www.tashi. T A S H E E I N C dot com. Till next week. <laughs> bye bye for now. <laughs>